Hello everyone and welcome to After Hours Gaming League. This is the 2015 season, week one, and I am so excited to be in the regular season. All the madness begins. Uh, so let's get right to introducing our teams really quickly. This is a pick band phase that we have already been uh, decided in chat before a game to make sure everybody actually gets the champion they want. Uh, so we will review this momentarily, but first let's introduce our teams. On the blue side, we are going to have Microsoft One, that's Microsoft W-O-N, because they're just hilarious like that. Um, of course, from the Microsoft company that built this wonderful OS that uh, we are able to view this game on. And they are going to be playing for the charity Charity Water, uh, which for those of you unfamiliar is a charity uh, that helps uh, spread water access um, to uh, people obviously in areas that don't have very uh, easy access to clean water. Um, as you know, as a gamer myself, <laughs> and as most of you probably are, uh, I, I really like things that increase efficiency and uh, when you think of the um, pictures that we've all seen of people balancing water on their heads for a mile, a few miles long walk, uh, you know, it's just so inefficient to have to do that at the start of your day, uh, sometimes with multiple people, just to have the water you need to then start your day. So, um, Charity Water goes out and they uh, look for opportunities to build uh, more local wells or uh, introduce uh, new water filtration systems into the area, and it just overall helps immensely with efficiency. Um, and. Uh, the team on the red side is going to be Palantir Technologies Prime. Uh, Palantir Technologies is a data management security company, um, and they are going to be playing for the charity Child's Play. Child's Play, uh, great, another charity that we should all be in favor of as gamers. Uh, what they do is they go to children in the hospital or in domestic violence shelters, and they try to help uh, bring those children back the spark of actually being able to enjoy their childhood, that sort of, you know, uh, emblematic childlike enjoyment of just hanging out, being a kid, being able to uh, escape into your imagination and live a sort of carefree life. So what they do is they go to those children in need and they bring them the wonderful gift that is gaming uh, and try and, you know, give them that opportunity to once again be a kid and you know, get back to their, what they should be doing, get past all the trauma that they've gone through and actually be able to enjoy their life again. Um, so now let's get right into it because we're about to see a juicy final pick here. Yes, that will be a Nocturne pick with the Vi already locked in. So we have a lot to say about this, of course, quickly going over the bands here. <laughs> Those are not the same bands, so we will not actually be going over the bands here. <laughs> They're fairly standard bands though. Um, the first pick of Thrush, uh, very good, um, very strong, uh, CC all around, uh, fairly tanky as well, so very good engage there to start off. Um, and as we see the full compositions begin to uh, fill out here, uh, we do see that uh, for the blue side, we're going to have lots of engagement opportunities, of course, Nocturne, Ult, uh, Vi Ult, even Vi Q. Uh, very strong ways to get in uh, to fight, start that team fight off strong with the uh, right engagement. Same with Thresh, you have a lot of pick opportunity again with Vi as well. Of course, there's pick opportunity there. Um, and we all know <laughs> how strong TF uh, engagements can be if uh, he starts off with that ultimate and preps his wild card for as soon as he comes out of his ultimate to all of a sudden create a pick wherever he teleported to. So that's going to be um, very strong pick potential, a lot of pressure uh, globally, uh, especially once the ultimates are uh, unlocked for everybody. Uh, we're going to see a lot of global pr pressure, so uh, keep an eye out for the blue side to sort of uh, abuse the map pressure and the minions to get any lane out of uh, position and then instantly pile onto that lane. That will be almost guaranteed kills every time, so. Uh, now, looking at the red side team, uh, purple team in air quotes, <laughs> uh, we do have uh, Jinx, Annie, J4, Morgana, and Maokai. So, uh, the main engagement for this team is of course going to be the infamous Flash Tibbers <laughs> that everyone fears. <laughs> um, 
Uh, we do have alternate engagement routes, of course, J4, uh, Flag and Drag in, Ultimate in, uh, and the Maokai uh, route is always very strong, uh, following up that with his slow. And we, of course, have the Morgana Q, and if she gets into position, she can Ultimate in Zonia's if she goes that route, um, lock everyone down. Uh, very strong CC teams on both sides, especially, again, with that infamous Annie stun. <laughs> Gonna be disgusting amounts of CC on both sides. Uh, so the real question um, that we're gonna want to keep all of our eyes peeled for is largely going to be uh, what kind of uh, damage output is going to come from each team. So of course we have uh, Corky is going to have that mid-game uh, power spike once he completes the Triforce, assuming he does in fact go Triforce first. Uh, there is the question of Vi. Uh, with uh, the amount of uh, ability power that's going to be brought on the team uh, from TF and early on Corky, uh, especially following up uh, the Trinity Force with that Sorcerer issues, uh, might, uh, we might see Vi go a more damaging route instead of going uh, second item tank item and just going full tank after her initial AD jungle item. We might see some more damage come out of Vi, perhaps a secondary brutalizer um, or maybe even a trinity force. Um, but that will of course also depend on Nocturne. Nocturne likely to uh, go Blade of the Bruin King here starting top. Uh, very good uh, for allowing uh, split push opportunities of course with his uh, global ultimate late in the game. Uh, Nocturne can uh, not only abuse that ultimate, but the teleport as well. So we're going to see, even when that teleport is down, even more split pushing coming out of this Nocturne, because uh, if there's a fight going down in the middle of the map, he can be split pushing a far lane's turret, and then just walk away for five seconds, and then ult right into the middle of a team fight and be in the thick of things immediately. So definitely be on the lookout for that Nocturne. Um, in the late game split pushing, uh, that will be a huge threat again, especially with his passive. His passive, uh, of course, is the AoE auto attack. Um, after a certain amount of autos, he does get uh, a full auto attack on any target around him. So again, wonderful for split pushing. Probably harping a little bit too much on that. You might be able to tell how tickled I am by this Nocturne pick. <laughs> but uh, so looking at the red side's composition again, it will be uh, Annie mid with the Ignite, so she is going to be going for uh, some early kill pressure on this TF, which is the way to go. Um, for sure, definitely if you can get that TF behind early in lane, even not necessarily get a kill on him, but make him uh, miss a lot of CS, put him behind on his items, then those TF ganks uh, from his uh, global ultimate once he hits 6 are going to be that much less effective. So Annie, not necessarily going to be playing to put herself into a huge AP Nightmare Annie that we're all afraid of, but more looking to counteract uh, Twisted Fate and keep him down in lane as much as possible uh, to try and prevent any global pressure coming out of that mid lane. Um, we, of course, uh, are going to see... So uh, the initial question I posed was, where is the damage going to come from? We have... Uh, Annie for the red side is going to bring out a lot of damage, uh, a lot of Annie's build uh, Deathfire Grasp first for that uh, increased burst combo damage. And of course Jinx, uh, very <laughs> infamous late game AD carry, going to have insane damage in the late game uh, when we do reach it. So let's get this client booted back in here really quick, switch some frames around here. Uh, Maokai will, of course, be trying to go into uh, the middle of the team fights to absorb as much damage as possible um, to get that dam make use of that full damage reduction on his ultimate. Um, but again, the damage is likely going to be coming from Jinx and Annie. That is both types of damage. We might see um, more Glass Cannon Morgana come out. Um, with this team, I think with the Annie uh, Glass Cannon, as I presume it shall be, uh, there will prob probably be enough uh, ability power damage here, and it looks like we have a visual bug starting out. <laughs> Might have to restart this client if this doesn't fix itself in a moment. But carrying on with that train of thought, so here we go, actually spawning in now. There's the <laughs> there are the real champions. Okay, they have been identified. 
Um, so it looks like uh, with the Annie and Jinx damage uh, for the red side, along with possible Morgana damage, especially because Morganas just love to build that Zonius for their ultimate, uh, there will probably be sufficient uh, damage coming, so we're going to look for more uh, tank items uh, expected out of Jarvan here. I'm not quite sure if he'll go for the tank jungle item. Uh, most Jarvans go for that damage item because, of course, the damage ratios for Jarvan on his AD are quite insane. It looks like we're going to have an early invade here. Unfortunately uh, for the red team, there is already a line of scrimmage out for the blue side. So any invade will probably be spotted out fairly easily. There is a ward down here in the pixel bush in river. Just keep an eye out. It will probably be a delayed invade. There is no ward on the top side here uh, of red side's jungle. So uh, they might not know if they're being counter invaded right now, which might embolden them since they haven't seen anything in the bottom lane yet. Corky already uh, backing off, throwing that ward in the tribe, which it looks like pinging out on Maokai here. It looks like Corky and Thrush might be starting Krugs here with that uh, ward in the uh, tri-bush there. Twist of Fate has been spotted out. Maokai knows there's warriors, so that does give them a little bit more confidence that no shenanigans are going on in their side of the jungle. Uh, and they will be starting uh, the new white camp here for red side. Uh, but overall, no, it will be Vi coming down instead to start the Krugs. Uh, and go for that red buff. Okay. Yeah, uh, the Krug, when you smite the Krugs, instead of just the passive poison, uh, you do get uh, the stun on your auto attack. So that's going to be probably more uh, useful for Vi in the early clearing f stages, even though her red buff will time out faster since she's starting on that red side. Annie's charge is uh, already down right now. She's got two charges up, so... Looks like she either uh, started off the lane with a shot to a minion or didn't charge up that stun in base. So we're going to see not too much action coming out of the mid lane quite yet. But we're already getting into some action here in the bot lane. Not even level 2 yet, but Thresh being very aggressive going uh, into the face of Jinx and Morgana to try and get those auto attacks down. Very good uh, pressure there. This rearrange is really quick. And Nocturne being very aggressive in the top lane as well. Jinx quite chunked already from that Corky damage with the Phosphorus Bomb. Right, get everything nice and lined up. Um, yeah, Nocturne, we are probably going to see whenever his passive does come up, he's probably going to uh, move uh, towards Maokai to get uh, shot in on Maokai and continue to CS while he harasses. That is one of the Strong benefits of a Nocturne in lane. Corky just throwing out as much poke as possible onto that Jinx. It looks like there's going to probably be some uh, heavy pressure here in the bottom lane that uh, is going to continue to cause Jinx to miss some of the CS. Um, looks like they will be able to get that cannon minion, but already uh, discrepancy is starting to show here early in the game. Looking at the mid lane here, we see TF a little chugging those potions already, a little bit chunked, uh, but he will have some more sustain coming out. So much action in the bottom lane right now. Um, keep focusing on the mid lane here. He does have that sustain of the blue card, so probably not going to have any issue there. And he does not land the stun on him, but she will continue to farm that out. The zoning right now in this bottom lane actually very strong now that Thresh has that full... Uh, combination good sidestep on the Morgana binding going to continue to zone them out there's definitely going to need some help here the discrepancy right now is almost 10 minions in the bottom lane between the 80 carries so that is quite insane right now Morgana missing the binding again and will get engaged on the hook is black shielded but the damage from Corky in the 1v1 uh, of the two ADCs, trading fairly evenly, but Jinx, I'm just not sure if she can afford to do that at this point. So low on hit points right now. Going to have to try and farm up as much as she can with that uh, Q turned on so she can farm from a distance. Thresh was just stepping forward and getting the flay. Corky, not quite enough damage. Not six yet, so not able to finish her off with that ultimate, but... Uh, going to have to probably go back right now. It is Jinx a very early back. Uh, that's definitely unfortunate. There is no item break right now um, for Jinx to cash in on. So that's actually horrible time for Jinx to have to go back. Probably going to get another 
uh, uh, Doran's Blade. So we see maybe waiting. No, just gonna get some health pots uh, and come back to lane. So actually a pretty bold choice from Jinx. Talk about that for a moment. She was so far behind, she didn't want to actually try and cash in anything. Uh, wanting to save for a larger item, so she just bought some health pots here uh, to try and do what she could. If I spot it out here from the smite on the wolf camp. Um, so hopefully Jinx will be able to catch up in that lane. Again, the discrepancy is the story of the game right now at this point. 18 to 33 on the uh, <laughs> designated carry for the team. Nocturne going aggressive here. Getting quite a large amount of damage onto this Maokai before he has 6, does not have any damage reduction, and does miss uh, with that skill shot at the end there. Not taking too much damage from the minions, so Nocturne, still with health pots to spare, is going to be putting quite a lot of pressure on the Maokai, who does need to start chugging through his potions and uh, popping his flask as much as possible if he wants to prevent an early back. Looks like Twisted Fate looking to make a move up in top. But no Nocturne probably not going to be able to make too much out of that given how far pushed up Maokai is. And uh, with that sustain, of course, as you just saw there. Going to be hard to make a play there, but they might go for it. They are going to have quite a large minion wave here. There it is, TF coming in. The yellow card is up, and it does land. Nocturne not tanky enough in the early game though to tank up too many turret shots, so a noble attempt there did drain Maokai of all his mana, so he's going to miss out on some CS here and have to go B. Uh, J4 fighting, trying to punish the TF for that gank, but not able to accomplish too much there, just a little bit of uh, harass damage down as he left the lane. TF going to ult in behind the Annie here, who did get the first blood with the Tibbers. And her flash and ignite were down on Divide, and she almost gets the kill onto TF as well. No, 15 hit points. Nocturne gonna ult in on the Annie, gonna pick up the return kill there. TF barely making it out with his life. An amazing play there in the mid lane to turn that situation around and make it a one for one. So, first blood does go over to the red side, but uh, a return kill swiftly uh, <laughs> delivered. Nocturne did ult down after teleporting though, uh, so he's going to miss out on a little bit of CS as he returns to lane, but with that heavy advantage right now over Maokai, not going to be hurting him too much. Thresh just barely missing the hook on the Jinx there, just slightly out of range. J4 uh, creating a little bit of pressure mid here, trying to allow Annie some breathing room to go get her blue buff with the transfer. Morgana still not able to land any of those bindings. They do really need to start um, getting some opportunities down to harass back um, and create some free space to breathe <laughs> in this bottom lane, which they desperately need right now. It looks like they are going to be setting up for a dragon. Going to spot out the pink ward is Vi. She's going to run past it here really quickly to see if she can create an opportunity of the blue, which it does look like they'll be able to do. No, they are going to be forced away. Morgana flash in is with J4 flag and drag here. Does not have the ultimate. J4 does not have his ultimate. And no, Annie with her burst is going to be able to bring down the Thresh with Vi soon to follow. Morgana actually going to be picking up the kill on Vi. Not the primary target there, but a great roam down um, from Annie responding very quickly. TF not able to respond in time. Of course, we see the passive there uh, being abused by Nocturne to shove that lane out as quickly as possible, continue to mount that CS lead above the Maokai. But now the story has changed in the gold lead. Annie bursting down Twisted Fate, gonna be able to just <laughs> outright full combo him uh, right after he returns to lane from full health. Impressive play from Annie there, knowing the limits of her champion very well, to able to just know that when that stun times out she will have enough damage to complete the kill. Um, very strong play from this Annie who rightfully deserves her 3 uh, one and one status right now with the early uh, needlessly large rod picked up. She is going to have to be a little bit more respected um, because now, uh, especially after she goes back again, is probably going to have a very early lead on an item completion. 
J4 not able to create any play to steal that blue buff, but the game momentum has shifted despite the CS advantages, which are worth a substantial amount of kills to somewhat even up this game, but with the kills from these early fights, we gotta believe that red side is actually going to be likely advantage now. Morgana walking up to try and use that red buff as much as possible. Her ult does not land on anyone, but she does get the point blank Q on a Corky. The Jinx ult does not do very much since Corky was not low, and Corky is going to be able to back out and just ult from afar to try and return some damage, and that is from the uh, return damage from Corky there, that is going to be a fairly even trade in the bottom lane. Corky is going to go B though, so with both of them going B, Jinx, uh, the turret destroyer, no, they are going to uh, stay in lane because of that pressure Jinx was going to create for sure to take down this turret. But they do have to be careful here. Again, the Dr Jinx and Morgana ultimates are down. Vi looking to try and clear out this ward, defend that pink ward there. Yes, she will. <laughs> um, Annie clearing out a pink here above the red buff for blue side. So vision control around the Baron Pit. Still somewhat divided up with these uh, fairly equal ward coverages, but an attempt for Dragon is likely to come soon. Um, and both teams are going to feel confident that pink is going to be eventually cleared out. Uh, J4 just going to spot a ward there. Uh, might even uh, smite those uh, Razor Beaks to clear out that ward. He does ping it out on the map. Uh, but that buff might actually be more useful to try and clear this out if they are going to go for Dragon. Vi, the only one down here now, might not be able to defend this turret, but no, she will fend off Jinx with the Q, and the Chompers are going to be enough to keep her off. No, Jinx! Going to get ulted by Vi. Vi thinks she's brought the damage. And she almost has one more auto would have been enough. Jinx very boldly stepping forward to try and get as much auto harass down as possible. Under 10 hit points um, during the thick of that. If only Vi had gotten one more auto off, uh, even despite the auto, just the damage from her passive on her W to get that true damage with the armor penetration uh, with the one more tick of an auto attack onto Jinx would have been enough. Very close there, unfortunate for Blue Side, who does need the kills right now if they want to uh, reestablish that lead that they had early game with the CS advantage. Again, the global gold is still tilting in the Red Side's favor despite the CS lead in almost every lane going to the Blue Side. Of course, Annie picking up the slack there with her three kills and 20 plus lead on CS. Uh, Nocturne, no going to stay in the top lane. I thought we might see with. All these people lingering around the mid lane, we might see a pylon attack into the mid lane. But we might still see that with Vi coming in. Her assault and battery is not up yet, but she, of course, is one of the stronger in lane gankers uh, with just her Q. Gonna clear out some wards here really quickly, trying to establish some more vision around that dragon pit. Uh, might want to get the buffs up uh, really quickly before. Uh, we try and see any dragon attempts right now by taking a red, um, but there is going to be that going over to Jinx, but the ultimate from Nocturne is going to go in the mid lane, um, not able to create too much, I was thinking he might have been top lane, <laughs> um, uh, because I didn't really think that Annie was going to go yeah. down from that, uh, a good interruption on the recall there, Twisted Fate being a pest. <laughs> Uh, but Annie is forced to choke through what health pots she has. Uh, Jinx taking quite a bit of damage. Oh, from a uh, simple trade there. Oh, she's got to back up if she's going to try and survive these. Hide behind some minions. Those quirky ultimates are going to be very strong. Uh, quite able to take Jinx out if she's not ca uh, careful there. So seeing that Jinx has gone back, the bot lane uh, and mid lane might try to create some dragon pressure here, though. That Annie is going to be a nightmare. If they do get low, uh, they will be, of course, a threat uh, for the Annie, who will be able to just throw down a combo on anybody. Thresh missing the flay there, though the black shield was up. Wouldn't have been very effective. Vi just looking to establish some more wards down here. Uh, wait, Possibly wait for the speed shrine to time out. Um, TF continuing to try and create that pressure mid lane. But it's not looking like he's going to be able to. Morgana going aggressive because Jinx has returned. And Corky going to be able to land the ultimate just past Jinx. Thresh landing the Q. Great Q. 
Will a heal be enough? No! Thresh will take it! The empowered auto attack is in fact OP. <laughs> Jinx is going to be able to make it out of there, or not going to be able to make it out of there with her life. And four people are going to be in this bottom lane to create that pressure to take this turret and possibly rotate out for dragging this ward. Will still be up uh, with plenty of time. The turret does go down and we're going to see possibly a sweeper come out from Thresh here. No, just barely misses it. So they will have vision of this dragon going down. The teleport going to be made fairly early from Maokai. But here comes Annie. No, they're going to focus onto the Vi. Secure the jungler, get rid of the enemy smite. Very good play there. I'm going to resist the temptation I was taking of looking at that sweet, delicious, low corky. Uh, <laughs> Thrush needs to get out of here if he's going to want to be safe there. And he will back out. Uh, but that is the dragon going over to the red side. First dragon, very important uh, dragon. Increasing the flat uh, damage. I believe that's right. I'm not seeing the buff on them, however, and I am seeing it on the blue side, so I might have actually missed an amazing steal here. Um, not quite sure what happened there. My apologies to you on that. Uh, possibly could have been a T TF uh, shot over the wall. We will actually back up because I feel that's an immense injustice after this full combo from Annie annihilating the TF in the mid lane. So we will back up very briefly. Uh, just to see what did happen in that dragon. Okay, of course, uh, seeing the Vi, then I'll just lock her down, prevent any damage onto the Annie there. Nocturne hanging around on the top side of TF. No, it might just be a wild cards that comes out here. Nocturne giving the vision. And yes, it will be the wild cards. Uh, wow, great timing there from the Twisted Fate. Certainly making up for that discrepancy in the mid lane with that uh, steal of the first dragon with a clean smite available. Very good shot there. So we are going to see Maokai coming in, trying to defend this turret, taking out quite a bit of minions uh, as he harasses Nocturne away from the top tower. But the rotation mid... Uh, is just going to leave some wards here after they did take the mid lane turret for the blue side. Um, took it for the blue side down, that is. Blue buff is up, so it uh, looks like Twisted Fate not going to go towards it, so they might try and create an early play here before they go over uh, and do the uh, following buff transfer, or possibly even try and contest uh, the blue transfer here for the red side. No, it looks like it is just going to be a play in the blue lane. They are pinging out. They want the blood on the Morgana and Jinx. They are not aware, however, that Annie and J4 are nearby. Annie is going to secure that blue buff. Trying to ward, see if they can spot a vision. They do hook J4, but is this the fight they're looking for? J4 going to Cataclysm on Annie Morgana. Going to be enough damage to take him down. And Twisted Fate with the old ult in but the jinx ult the tables are so even right now jinx with her passive is gonna not be able to get another reset on the tf and be forced away by the corky flame chompers saving her life great action there good rotations from both teams quick response from the red side um to the blue teams uh slight over aggression there but it did work out for them in the end gonna keep that score pretty even right now six to nine in kills uh, with that turret going down, only a 1.5k uh, lead for the red side, despite that kill advantage. Again, uh, the uh, minion lead is persisting and growing for these mid and bottom lanes, but uh, top lane is evening up quite a bit. Uh, let's look at some items completed. That Rod of Ages is completed and almost fully stacked. Not quite fully stacked yet, but getting there. Uh, about halfway stacked right now for Maokai, so he's going to start becoming a terror as these team fights uh, proceed from now on. Going to be just so tanky, especially with his ultimate for the damage reduction there. Uh, be <laughs> if you see a Maokai be the engage for a team fight from now on, know the blue side's probably not going to have the best team fight preceding that. Uh, so we do see uh, Annie did get the Rod of Ages uh, 
after her Deathfire Grass, so it will be a little bit behind a standard Raw of Ages, but since she is so far ahead with a total gold here of 8,000 <laughs> 20 minutes into the game, quite a large amount of gold, almost as much as uh, one and a half players on the enemy team uh, of any two given players. So that's quite an incredible gold lead. So her Rod of Ages actually is going to be fairly t uh, stacked in time. Uh, Nocturne just going to force J4 away with some brute force onto that turret. Uh, the mini wave simply too large here. And it looks like the rotation actually very strong for blue side right now they do not know that there is no answer for this mid lane morgana gonna be able to walk away because she landed that binding uh thresh gonna try and actually go create a play over here um missing that kill onto the tf my apologies there but we are going to see this thresh play her and lock her down with the hook to secure that kill for corky after all uh, but that will be a one for one since they left thresh did leave uh, with vi in tow uh, to make that play, TF was left alone, so he did go down in that fight. Annie, again getting the kill, becoming absolutely monstrous in this game. Uh, the dragon will be coming up in a minute. You see it pinged out here from blue side, so they're going to start trying to establish some vision control right now. Going to get the crab, uh, the sc rift scuttler, <laughs> secured for the blue side here. Um, and they're looking to go in, try and create another pick here. They are going to sweep out and know that they do have control of the vision right now. And the Annie is caught out. And that's the main damage threat gone. Corky is focusing on a Jinx. And he does get her with the rocket. Great shot there. And a blind shot from Corky. Fantastic. Landing that onto the Jinx. Great play. So that's going to create exactly what they need. An opportunity here to take this mid turret for essentially free right now. Pretty much no risk. Maokai not going to be able to effectively split push to answer in the top and they will be able to walk this back and get that uh dragon as soon as it spawns uh get some extra clamping down on the vision control with that sweeper from thresh possibly going to sweep this out and they do spot it so that is going to be a dark uh, uh fog of war for the red side and they're gonna walk right into a death brush oh no Oh, the double ward's coming down, but it is too late, and that is the jungler down, so there is no smite. This will be the second blue, remember, we did see that Twisted Fate uh, steal with his wild card, so that is the second buff gonna be uh, going over to the blue side, and all of a sudden this game has turned completely around again. Blue side now, uh, you're seeing sweepers even defensively coming down for the red side in their own jungle. That is the amount of pressure that is now created onto this red team. So great strong mid game here. They definitely are making use out of that Corky um, once he completed the training force. It has started to go quite wild here. Um, Going to be abusing that uh, power spike as much as possible here. And really trying to carry the team along with the Nocturne, uh, which is going to be transitioning probably into more tank now. We do see an early Banshee's Veil uh, as an answer to that Annie. Uh, <laughs> absurd damage, especially with that stun. Um, so hopefully uh, when Nocturne ults into the fight, he will have that Banshee's Veil up and Annie will not be able to lock him down with a combo. Um, though that damage might just be enough to break through even the MR and health of a Banshee's Veil. But we do see um, by retreating away from the J4 right now in her own jungle, uh, luckily does not lose the blue buff, but there is a ward down there, so they are going to have vision uh, of when it comes up and be able to possibly contest that blue buff again. The sweep on the double wards here, uh, Morgana is going to be able to proc uh, her Frostfang right now, uh, but that's not going to give them much security of vision right now. Blue side looking to push that vision forward. The blue buff did just spawn. So that looks like it is going to be a blue buff going over to the blue team here. Unless Morgana can land a lucky Q to contest. No, not quite. Very close though. Great shot from Morgana. Uh, if it had only been a second sooner. Uh, but a great attempt there to try and slow down this blue team. And they are going to be uh, trying to create some pressure. Jinx going back just as they create the pressure onto this turret. So that might be a turret going down without the wave clear. I mean, they do have Annie's wave clear, but she's so fragile right now. And as the main damage threat does not want to risk it, so they are just going to uh, see that inner turret in the bottom lane. The Maokai has quite amount 
of minions with him, so even though he's not the largest split push threat, with all those minions he might be able to get some work done here onto that turret. Nocturne looking to try and answer, possibly going to ult in. His ult is up, and it looks like no, he is actually going to just walk it in uh, with Maokai uh, walking away. So he'll take some delicious CS here and go on about his day. Corky um, looking to keep some pressure up here in the mid lane uh, as J4 goes down to spot out that pink ward and he will clear it out. J4 did uh, get the uh, ruby sight zone, fully upgraded sight zone for extra vision control. Probably a good play right now um, because with such a close game we are actually going to see vision become a likely deciding factor. And he flashes but not does not to Evers initially but then she does hitting two people instead. Thresh, great lockdown CC there. Actually going to be able to get an answer kill onto the Morgana, though that is just the support, and she has been killed quite a few times. She will still probably be worth some amount of gold given her kills uh, and assists. So, a good one for one there. Uh, Twisted Fate, with his uh, ultimate still up, should be able to return uh, to the fight if another one does break out quicker. Um, so blue side might be looking for a fight here, but it looks like everyone else uh, is just going back regardless <laughs> of what advice I might want to give them. Uh, so uh, we're just going to see J4 running, sweeping duties here, trying to get some of that vision control back. Uh, high priority again on the vision, even buying a pink and green ward despite already having a ruby sidestone. So J4 really trying to uh, create those plays for the rest of his team here. He knows uh, Annie's got to be the one uh, who lays down uh, that initial damage if they want to have a strong team fight break out here. So he is going to uh, sacrifice his own uh, potential quite a bit to try and make sure that Annie doesn't get caught out in the fog of war um, and can actually catch them out uh, with some picks here. Good uh Ward there to spot out the pink ward, but they are going to have to retreat very quickly as there was the entire team there. <laughs> uh, Dragon will be coming up in one minute here, so we're going to see everyone start to rotate more down towards the Dragon Pit area. And that ward will actually survive a key spot for the ward there from the blue side. So Vision starting to be established here for blue team, and with those minions pushing up, they will have free reign here to sweep out those bushes, try and secure any Vision. Uh, that they can, but J4 returning to the battle right now uh, with his uh, refreshed sightstone uh, will actually be able to do quite a bit of work and with the pink ward still up there should be uh, some strong vision battles breaking out here uh, momentarily. Looks like Annie is going to be spotted out by the pink ward so trying to roam around create a little bit of a play there with J4 uh, creating some confrontation with Vi. Vi Definitely, yes, does not want to queue into the darkness there chasing uh, the J4 as Maokai and Jinx were both there in the mid lane with him. And he's still roaming around here, uh, not aware that they did not get this pink ward down, uh, or did not clear it out when it was thrown down, so she is going to be spotted out, that little cute adorable black shield placed on her uh, to try and make sure Vi doesn't uh, answer with any CC, and she will blow the stun on there, so she's going to try and charge that back up. Uh, one more charge of your shield will do it, and that's the dragon starting. TF will ultimate to see it. The speed shrine is down, and Corky and TF are not going to be enough this time to steal that dragon away. So that is a dragon secured by J4 with his smite that time. But the Nocturne split push in the top doing quite a bit of damage. We see uh, the Cutlass and the Yomus uh, popped. It does quite a lot of damage to the uh, turrets, and that will be the turret going down. Nocturne probably going to give up his life here. Going to just try and do whatever damage he can before he goes down. But that was a very strong split push, and the base is now cracked on the red side. So uh, we do see essentially trading that for a dragon. It is the first dragon of the game, a very important dragon uh, with a 6% to uh, AP and... Uh, damage uh, attack damage excuse me <clears throat> uh, flat a very important dragon to get so possibly worth it but cracking your base is something that's very uh, very problematic especially as we go on into the late game here and Baron becomes a contestable objective uh, we're gonna see 
the pressure in the top lane going to have to be answered absolutely by the red team to defend that bear inhibitor. Uh, so we could see blue side starting to focus more onto uh, the dragon area uh, to try and, or pardon, the baron area to try and create as much pressure um, on the top and baron to try and uh, force either a confrontation uh, that's favorable to them or squeeze possibly a baron or an inhibitor out of it. J4 are going to go around trying to establish some vision around here. Knows that's a problem, is going to uh, start to ward up. Let's just do a quick alteration of vision here. This is what the red side sees. So they do have strong control uh, of the river area, and they do see that in blue. Does have some pretty aggressive wards into their lane. Uh, Nocturne going pretty hard here, trying to uh, trade substantially with this Maokai. Calling for assistance is the Maokai. But they do not want to take it because they know the rest of the blue team is coming up. But Mal uh, Maokai will get away because obviously he is just that tanky. <laughs> Didn't even need to pop his ultimate there. Uh, and with the charges of the flask he will be perfectly fine. Uh, but he is poked away and that is the uh, a preview of the pressure we're going to see. TF uh, split pushing in this bottom lane is going to be answered by Jinx now. So that uh, global pressure we were talking about earlier... Uh, hold on on that thought. We do have Thresh getting the follow-up chain CC on a Jarvan, and he will walk right into the Vike uh, shot. And Annie caught out as well. The exhaust going down on her before she could even pop her DFG. But wow, that is exactly the play this blue side needed. Oh, Morgana panicking in the uh, with the recall right on top of a ward there. Uh, gonna have to get back and try and defend this top side, which they are all are immediately rotating to, despite having a good push in the mid lane. Gonna try and take this while it is a uh, five v three. Maokai not the best hook target, but there is a Q on a Jinx. Gonna be enough distraction to just take this inhibitor, and that is super minions with an already pushing wave for the blue side. Got some good vision to see where everybody's coming down on their way out as well. Going to be picking up this uh, red buff onto the Corky. Going to leave one of the minions there to be a pest. Oh man, what that is exactly what this blue team needed. Now, with the kills officially in their advantage now, that gold lead starting to really show uh, from the split pushing TF. Uh, trying to claw his way back into this with some CS, though still very far down. Uh, the CS advantage is still in their favor, given the Nocturne and Maokai uh, and Corky Jinx discrepancies. So we're going to see, uh, with that inhibitor down, ooh, we do have a pause right now. Uh, I'm not quite sure what the pause was about. Uh, we'll be able to skip that, because I am a professional and totally planned to need to rewind earlier in case if there was a pause. So, no secondary pause. It looks like we are having some connection problems with J4. Unfortunately, uh, skip ahead, see if we can do that again. No, my trick did not work a second time. I should just press the jump button. There we go. Alright, looks like we are back. No, that was the exact same problem. <laughs> so we will actually just have to be patient and wait out this pause here. Hopefully it won't be uh, too long for J4. There we go. There's the pause coming in. So... Looking at the items right now, uh, we do have uh, Annie with her uh, Void Staff right now, as there is not too much other magic damage on the team. Well, I'm actually going to question that as an item instead of uh, the Abyssal Scepter. Uh, since she is so far ahead, uh, Maokai does have the Rod of Ages and Morgana does have the Zonias. Um, so there is going to be quite a lot of supportive magic damage coming out, um, but most of that probably will be blocked out by the triple Banshee's Veil we are seeing come out from the blue side here. Mostly trying to avoid any picks from the Morgana or any stuns. Uh, so that, but that uh, passive effect of that is to just give everybody more MR. Um, so Annie probably actually making the right choice here with the Void Staff just for herself to make sure uh, that as much as, uh, as much as possible of her ability power does go through here. Sweeping out some wards as we are back in the game now. Um, we are seeing Jinx start to hit her stride into the late game, building some damage on top of uh, her Static Shiv and Infinity Edge. This is where Jinx is going to start to come into her own and 
Uh, with those six assists, despite not getting any kills, she actually is not behind. She is keeping her stride fairly well here. So if Jinx is not respected, if there is a lot of overfocus on that Annie in the late game here with the resets, Jinx will be able to be quite a uh, strong contender here uh, for damage output. So they're going to have to keep their eye on the prize here with the two carries, not just the extremely insane Annie who did just pick up another needlessly large rod. Probably going to be a Zonia or a Death Cap actually coming out of that. Um, definitely for sure, a Death Cap coming out of that. Uh, pressure being created in the mid lane by these uh, three Musketeers over here, four Musketeers now, with the addition of the Corky. And they're going to rotate over to the Baron with Maokai being pinned because of the Super Minions and that pressure they just created in the mid lane. Uh, they might want to go for that Baron. That is a good call, but. They're going to actually opt to try and create more pressure while the inhibitor is down. Uh, and Maokai must be occupied in that top lane. They're going to actually try and create some further pressure here in the mid lane. Possibly with that uh, Nocturne split push. As he will be close enough to ultimate and essentially uh, enter any team fight at any time. Uh, but they are starting to spread out a bit here. And fall back. Not quite sure exactly what they're going to go for. It probably is going to be this dragon that's spawning here in a few seconds. So they will pick up what will be their third dragon of the game. Uh, unless Jinx is able to contend with some rocket. But there is no vision right now for the red side. Um, so this is going to be going down blind. So they will not know that this is down here. She is going to rocket anyway. A good uh, sixth sense there. But it is unfortunately too late. Um, Jinx with that ultimate hidden away because we are not back on all cam, my apologies. <laughs> um, now down is going to actually uh, not be able to deliver as much damage for this fight if they're going to contest Baron. J4 still having connection problems it seems um, since he's still in base right now. That's actually really unfortunate for this J4. Um, could be a reason why he's been struggling uh, a bit in this game. Uh, he has been creating some very good plays here in this uh, later mid-game uh, session with his uh, CC that he brings and the ward availability. But that is actually very unfortunate if he's not able uh, to be fully connected with us during this game. Very unfortunate turn of events there. Um, but again, looking back at the items, we do see the Frozen Heart completed for the Maokai. Uh, so that will try and reduce uh, some of the attack speed coming out. Um, not from the AD carry, but specifically from the Nocturne, uh, which did uh, go two damage items with that uh, follow-up Cutlass, but now has fully transitioned into tank with that Randuin's Omen and the Banshee's Veil. Um, Nocturne, probably with that Randuin's going on to him specifically, is going to look to be, um, if not the initial the immediate follow-up engage, uh, going very heavily deep into uh, the back line and pop that Randwin so everyone, uh, the slower uh, Thresh uh, and Corky without having to burn his only escape can be able to follow up and dish out um, some DPS along with Twisted Fate there. Uh, Thresh actually having an easy hook shot, um, <laughs> one, not necessarily bringing DPS there, but is going to be able to land um, a key flare hook a lot easier with uh, Nocturne already uh, ulting in and being uh, quite a pest that they do have to deal with. So as we're entering this late game, um, it does look like uh, the problem of Annie is actually going to start to uh, be less and less relevant as we're getting towards the point where people can start to pick up more defensive items all around. Um, notably, I didn't, I did touch on this earlier, but it's a very key point that we do need to emphasize here. Corky did pick up a Vanshee's Veil uh, for his, uh, after like three items. I mean that's a very early Banshee's Veil and that will uh, minimize quite a bit the damage output potential that he does have. Um, it's going to be a very solid choice given how many, uh, how much key CC they have and the fact that Annie is so fed at this point. I don't really know what else uh, you could have as an option at that point aside from doing the Banshee's Veil. Um, so, but that will reduce his uh, damage output right now. He could have followed that up with perhaps um, another raw damage, perhaps some uh, uh, penetration um, from a, a uh, why am I blanking on this right now? 
the AD penetration item. I keep wanting to call it Wits End, but it's not. Uh, you all know what I'm talking about. If you know the name of that item right now, write it in the comments below. <laughs> so we are still paused here. Um, okay, right as I say that, beautiful, the unpause coming in. So we will get back to the action now. So keep an eye out for Nocturne to have um, more than you would expect damage as we do start off this uh, Baron here and they are going to actually back away from me getting perhaps a little overzealous there with the uh, Annie and Morgana disappearing into the fog of war right right where they're pinging uh, where they were and they know they can abuse that with that pink ward there they know they have the fog of war advantage. So blue side does not want to start off that uh, Baron because they don't know how much vision they could be able to claw back. And overall it is dark largely for both sides. Red side, now thanks to Morgana having vision on it, is going to know that it's still up with that Nocturne uh, split push threat is making that threat very real in the bottom lane here while the rest of his team recalls, um, aside from Twisted Fate who's also up here with him. Uh, looking to get a pick on somebody with the those wards up here. Uh, I'm not going to be able to find it, but that is uh, creating a lot of pressure on this red side um, that's not necessarily going to be able to do anything about it. So, very strong uh, late game here coming out for the blue side, but this is still a very close game. There is only uh, 4,500 gold uh, advantage right now. Uh, some very key items have been built for the blue side though. Uh, we do see, of course, that locket coming out. Um, if Annie can get her AoE uh, stun out, um, that might be able to prevent uh, the locket being popped, but even the aura from the Aegis is going to prevent a lot of the damage that's coming out of Annie. Um, so hopefully, uh, well depending on which side you're rooting for, hopefully either uh, Thresh will be in position to block a lot of that damage, or Annie might be able to uh, use her Flash, which is now up, to uh, catch people far enough away from Thresh to get a lot of that damage in without the uh, Aegis Aura uh, reduction. Uh, so that pink ward was cleaned out, but this bush does have two wards and a J4 will clean out the normal ward now. Um, it looks like there is just a dance sort of around this mid lane area, lots of wards uh, around here. Vision pretty strong for both sides right now. Corky uh, blowing that just just to know he should get out of there. Very good uh, call right there to just no hesitation uh, Valkyrie away from there. Nocturne is going to back away from this uh, CS not knowing where everybody is. Corky with the pink ward is going to now see and be able to control that Baron Pit. So even though that is returned uh, immediately some damage coming out onto the Thresh here, actually popping face of the mountain on himself afterwards. Uh, perhaps a little bit of a panic move, not knowing if there was anybody uh, coming for a flank. Luckily for him, he was not, but that does mean the uh, face of the mountain shield will be down if a fight breaks out here soon. So Twisted Fate, the unanswered pusher right now on the bottom. Now, Jinx and Annie going to go down there to try and answer that. Malkai effectively neutralizing this Nocturne, though he is continuing uh, to make progress, and there is is still a, a lane that has no inhibitor turret right here. So we are going to see that as the red buff goes over to Corky here, and Vi does spot that pink ward, very critical pink ward, giving them a lot of vision. Uh, so things are starting to turn, uh, as far as vision goes, away from the red side as we look into their vision right now. Um... You see it's completely dark in their jungle, only minions giving the vision in this one ward in lane. So getting very scary now uh, for the red side, that side's still going to become even more important out of J4 as he comes to try and uh, get some of that vision back in their own jungle. Um, J4 is being pinged out right now, not going to be able to be caught unless he walks forward. He will decide to back off, a good call there, uh, the safer play for sure. I'm um, going to return here, possibly come back again. Vi going to get, uh, with the uh, Razor Beak passive, going to be able to clear that ward out. Continuing to deny vision, J4, luckily with the, <laughs> that Ruby Sidestone, is going to be able to replace it again. Uh, but they do not know 
if this Baron is going down, inching forward, trying to lay down some vision, they're going to see it's not down. And blue side is recalling, so if they do make a move here very quickly, they could be able to rush this Baron down, only Nocturne within range of being able to do something. Suppose Twisted Fate could answer this, but they are probably gonna just, gonna, just going to take this crab and leave. The Twisted Fate ultimate is popped. He does not teleport. No, he does, but only to a closer area to secure that this is not going to be going over to the red side. But they do have this Relic Shrine right now, so they are going to know if Blue Side tries to do this Baron. So that was a very key gain there, uh, killing that crab to have that permanent ward uh, vision on the Baron Pit. Um, Dragon is coming up in about 20 seconds right now, so we're going to um, possibly see a uh, divide between these two teams over which objective they're going to try to defend first. Uh, remember, red side only has one uh, dragon at this point, while uh, the blue side has three. So blue side, while not necessarily the most critical dragon for them, will open up the fifth dragon uh, possibility, which will give them an insane uh, buff. Uh, so this is something that red side should try to contend, and they are seeing contest excuse me they are seeing uh this going down so they're gonna oh catch out uh thrush with the binding and the chain cc not gonna be enough no the jinx ultimate is going to be enough and thrush laying down the box keeping him in position just long enough for that blind jinx ultimate to catch him and jinx actually going to go back to try and defend uh the split push nocturne who did get the inhibitor down so if the smite goes down as needed Yes. No, Annie actually picking it up, but that will be the dragon going on the red side. And that's the Vi Engage ultimate going down. Morgana gonna not be able to walk away with Twisted Fate. And that will be a large cleanup. Only Thresh going down, not what red side wanted to see there. Unfortunately, with the Jinx going back to try and stop Nocturne from getting anything beyond... An inhibitor, which is unfortunately necessary. Ooh, Vi getting caught out by the zap. Not able to walk away in that Q toggle onto Jinx for the rocket. Very great play there. That actually might have just saved them the game. Without Vi, it's a very much uh, more risky now to do this, Baron. And Jinx does look like she has a feeling of what's going down. Uh, Ward's possibly spotting them out right here, but she will not be able to contest only her ultimate up. She could try it with Vi down, but it does not look like she's going to even try to get vision on it. No, she will just do a blind ultimate, and that will not be late enough. So a valiant effort from Jinx, and with that Vi down, uh, remember that was uh, with Thresh still down as well. So three people not able to contest for this mid turret, uh, at least blue side felt so, against a Jinx. Um, with only what minions they had. So Jinx might have actually, with that catch on divide, been able to save uh, this middle lane from going down. So only the top lane is down for the red side. And that blue side turret just barely saved under 100 hit points right now. Somebody can go down and blow on it uh, when they want to get that global gold. Um, so we, we are going to have to watch out for a split push attempt uh, possibly from uh, Jarvan or the Jinx here coming out but that is Baron onto the blue side team uh, so look here for uh, some uh, sieging of that middle or possibly bottom lane here once they get some control of this jungle area down uh, which is what it looks like they're going for right now because with that top side cracked unless the inhibitor comes back they are going to be able to pressure these endlessly with the barrened up minions uh, and force a decision to be made of either letting the minions leak past no they were grabbing the blue buff they did have the timer on that putting that onto the twisted fate good call out there um, but as you see yes they are going to uh, create all lanes with the nocturne handling this mid lane here Porky trying to get some shots down on that jinx she did <laughs> zap the wrong way unfortunately there um, but did manage to dodge the Corky harass Ooh, getting chunked out by a uh, uh, just wild card there, taking about a third of her health. That's going to be a lot of damage, probably with all these minions here, the two hero cannon minions outranging the turret, going to be able to take the rest of it down. Yes, they will. Hero cannon minions, that's what happens when you have Baron Buff and three cannons with you. 
the turret simply cannot survive. And now uh, it looks like the red side team with the minions getting into their base are going to be hard pressed right now for an answer. Can't really extend too far into this team to get rid of these cannon minions. So that will be the inhibitor going down. And things look like they're spiraling out of control for the red team here with these cannon minions as well. Thanks to Nocturne putting in work here. Gonna be able with the next few shots. Yes, that is it going down. So the base completely cracked right now. Only one inhibitor alive for the red team. No global objectives up right now. So it is, ooh, great shot from Corky there. Jinx gonna have to heal. It is going to be an inhibitor just seated because they cannot contest at this point. I'm gonna have to just turtle up and try and defend these uh, uh, Nexus turrets right now. But with all these uh, super minions coming in in the Baron, it's up to the Annie engage. She does eliminate Twisted Fate right off the bat and Zonius to protect herself. But this is a wild team fight right now. Morgana not able to get her ult off on very many people. Uh, Vi gonna be able to get out, uh, spot out that Jinx and get the kill onto her uh, with the assistance of Corky there. Very scrappy fight right now. Hard to keep up with all this action, but it looks like Nocturne not going to go down to the Maokai. And that will be it with Morgana going down and not Maokai now going down. That will be the Quadra kill for Corky there, sitting back and putting out the damage. And there's the surrender. GG. Oh, amazing game there from both teams. Uh, great play. Just back and forth game very competitive and it did just spiral out of control towards the end there uh, for the blue side team and it was something that once they cracked that base on the top side uh, it was just not something they were able to come back from unfortunately uh, so that will be the entire game going to the blue side uh, quick scope of the damage here corky did put in quite amount of damage. I was a little concerned with that uh, quick, uh, excuse me, the quick Banshee's Veil if he was going to be able to deliver uh, that uh, damage, but it looks like he still was able to put it out and largely carry this game. A 10 and 0 and 6 game for the Corky. Amazing play. So, despite the valiant effort um, from Annie dominating the early and mid game, it was actually not quite enough with the Nocturne uh, split push threat and Corky being a monster. Uh, not going to be enough uh, for the red side to come out. So that will be Microsoft 1 uh, with the win here. Uh, great way to start off the official season in week 1 with a win. So uh, hopefully uh, we'll see some more really good competitive games like this coming out in the future from these two teams. Uh, if you... I uh, like this video. Uh, feel free to keep up with After Hours Gaming League's official website. They will have all the schedule uh, information there. And uh, feel free to stay tuned to my channel. I will continue to uh, cast these games and I'll try and keep up with these two teams specifically. Do as many follow up games as possible to uh, help you guys see through the season how these two teams develop. Uh, and I will catch you guys next time.